Oh, hello, my friends. I hope you are doing wonderful today. Ooh, goodness. Well, it has been interesting. I <laughs> came on live at 11 o'clock to do our detox time video that we're doing today, and I did not realize until I was almost done with it that I was not actually live. <laughs> I was talking to myself the entire time. So this time I am going to wait and make sure we've got a few people on so that I can see that it's actually going live because I pull my notes over so I don't even really see what's happening on the screen so that I have my notes to go by. So anyway, we're going to wait a little bit. I just put some peppermint on and I am going to put some clarity on to re-jumpstart all that. I took a few minutes between the original video that I did and um, got myself calmed down. Yay, Michelle, I'm not alone this time, exciting. Um, but I put on like some peace and calming and put on a little bit of stress away because uh, you know, you tend to get a little uptight. And I also just want to say, so if something weird like that happens, it's life. It's normal. You just got to let it go and move on. Um, it kind of made me feel good because I'm like, why isn't anybody commenting? And now I get the why. So anyways, for the next few weeks, we're going to be discussing all of the enzymes that Young Living carries. And I absolutely love this topic. It is truly one of my favorite because enzymes are literally the key to life. Like this is what it does for us so important in every single action that happens in your body. Every single action happens because there's an enzyme telling something to do something, flipping switches. And it worked out really good because this month, this month, thank you, baby. Angel Brian, you have to watch the video and tell me when it's live. Anyway, so this month, the month of May 2023, you get Detoxign for free when you place a 250 PV order. That's exciting. Young Living's always so generous, gives us so many things. So it worked out really good. The enzyme today we're talking about is our Detoxign. Detoxign is amazing. It has a host of powerful enzymes that help complete digestion, they help to detoxify your body overall, and they help to promote cleansing. This is important. And we're going to dig into each of the nutrients that are in our Detoxign so you understand the why, so you know whether or not you need it and you feel confident knowing which enzyme you need to take for which thing. I think that's really important. And before I go and rip apart Detoxign, I want to talk about enzymes in general for just a second. Um, an enzyme is a biological catalyst. So it, it its job is to jumpstart something. It puts pieces together, it takes pieces apart, it turns switches on, it turns them off, and enzymes are essential for literally for respiration, for digesting, for food, for muscle and nerve function, thousands of different roles. So we always, when we're talking about enzymes, we think about just your gut, but there are literally, some studies tell us that there's over uh, 1,300 different digestive enzymes, I mean different enzymes in the body. That's huge. And at any one time, there's like 75,000 different enzymes popping boop, 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 throughout your body. Like, this is a powerhouse. So interesting. I enjoy studying things and this has been one of those that have just kind of blown my mind. But regardless of which type or how many thousands, the facts are there's only three categories. So there's metabolic enzymes, digestive enzymes, and food enzymes. Metabolic enzymes are the enzymes that um, promote cellular function, overall health. They speed up chemical reactions. They um, are the ones that um, help the cells to detoxify. They are all about energy production. They're what help catalyze the ATP that we talk about, that energy currency. They enable us to see, hear, feel, move, think. Those are all metabolic enzymes. They're in every single organ, every single tissue, 100 and tri 100, I'm sorry, 100 trillion cells, enzymes, catalyst. It's a part of what they do. It's that um, energy factor that they bring to the game. Without metabolic enzymes, cellular life would literally cease to exist. And I say cellular life, not just human, because everything that's alive has enzymes, every single thing that's alive. And then there's digestive enzymes. These are ones that your body secretes 
during the digestive process. So it is from your mouth creating amylite, amylase, so when you chew your food, down to your stomach and the enzymes that it produces, um, your pancreas and the enzymes they produce, your liver, your gallbladder, your small intestines, stomach, colon, all of it has different types of digestive enzymes that go in and help break down the food that we eat <clears throat> so that we can absorb it. It breaks them down in teeny tiny small pieces. And this is really important to understand because your, your bowels, your intestines have these tiny little hairs. They're called villi. These little, and the hairs act as a straw. <laughs> and they suck the nutrients out of the food that we ingest. So you eat something and it's packed with magnesium. It has to be broken down into teeny tiny pieces so you can absorb the magnesium out. <laughs> and those villi take it into the bloodstream. And then those nutrients partner with those metabolic enzymes and then they go do the things. They build the house. Your body is the house that's the process. And your digestive system is kicking out so many different parts and pieces so we can absorb so that we feel good. And some of the digestive enzymes that your body creates are things like lipase and protease and amylase and, and pepsin and tripepsin. And all of these are digestive enzymes that are made in our body. Sometimes there's a lot, sometimes there's a little bit. Then there's enzymes that we get from our food. So that third class of enzymes is food enzymes. These are introduced through the foods that we consume or through supplements that we take in. So this is um, like raw foods have lots of different enzymes. We know that, we talk about enzymes all the time. But when we cook the foods, when we process the foods, the enzymes start to die. As a matter of fact, when we pick the foods, the enzymes, so, we have, if you go out and you grab beans off of the vine, that bean is a live food and packed with enzymes, packed with vitamins, packed with minerals. And if you eat it just like that, you rinse it off, you eat it, it is an enzyme powerhouse, things going on. But that same food left on your counter overnight already has dropped the amount of enzymes that it has. It's no longer a live food. It's a raw food, still great, still all kinds of stuff, still has enzymes, still has vitamins, minerals stay the same no matter how long they sit there. And then if you take that same raw food and you decide to just steam it for just a minute, so it kills off some of the enzymes, kills off some of the vitamins, but then it unlocks some of the other nutrients because some nutrients need a little bit of heat. And then you take that same um, green bean and you didn't just steam it, you decided to boil that baby and you boiled it, it kills off all of the enzymes that were in there. It kills off a lot of the vitamins that are in there. So understanding that processing the food, which we do, we're, we're not cows, we don't have two stomachs, right? We have to process some of the food in order to eat it. So some of those enzymes naturally die off. And understand that like an apple, literally makes all of the enzymes it takes to digest an apple. It, they come together, right? But we pick apples in the fall when they harvest, and then we're still eating apples right now in July when the blooms are just starting to hit the trees. So the enzymes that were on that in that apple the day it was picked, do the enzymes that are still in it 10 months later, is it still a healthy food? Of course, it's still good for you. It just has depleted a little bit. And it's really important, like things like, um, uh, lactose. People are constantly telling me, I'm lactose insufficient. You know, I got lactose. I can't drink, can't do dairy. Just gives me gas. It just bloats me. And you give me that story, but understand that real raw milk. So if you get goat milk or you get uh, cow milk, you get it right from the cow. It comes in its raw state with an enzyme called lactase. Lactase digest lactose. So you don't have that buildup of lactose because the milk, the product, came with its own enzyme to break it down. But what do we do with dairy in the US? We pasteurize it. Pasteurize is a fancy word for it. We boil that baby. We kill off the enzymes that are in there and then our body can't digest it. So I think it's important to understand why. Well, like if our food is supposed to have enzymes in it, why would we have to supplement with it? 
it's because we process things. It's just the cooking, processing, all of those things, it just destroys some of the enzymes. Do we get some? For sure. Does our body have some? For sure. But most of us, we have to add it. And understand, just to be clear, because I know somebody's going to type it in there, Shannon, you know, there are, there are fruits and vegetables, there's food out there that have extra enzymes, and it's true. There are some. Most only have the enzymes it takes to digest itself, which makes sense, right? But you have things like kiwi and pineapple and papaya, ripe bananas. All of those are packed with not only enzymes to digest itself as, as the product, Product, but they have enzymes in them that help digest other foods or they have an excess that will digest even more carbohydrate or whatever happens to be in it. Then you have fermented foods like kimchi and kefir and sauerkraut, that type of thing. They take the product, so they take it, you know, for sauerkraut, it is cabbage and cabbage on its own has some good enzymes in it. But when you ferment it, just like when you heat some stuff, you unlock stuff, when it's fermented, it unlocks other things and it will create some other enzymes. So it will literally have enzymes that digest other things. That's part of why fermented foods are so amazing for your digestion and adding them in. You can see things like kefir. Um, even if you're using a pasteurized uh, dairy to, to, to make your kefir, um, when it gets fermented, it will create lactase. So it will make, it's like, dude, I need this to be able to digest, and it creates it, because your microorganisms, I'm telling you, it, the way the body works is just fascinating to me. I absolutely get excited over it. So you even have things like avocados. Avocados are a food that has the lipase to digest itself. Lipase breaks down fats, but it has the lipase to break down the avocado, but it has extra lipase to break down other fats and release all those fatty acids. It's just, it's fascinating. So understanding the importance between the foods that we eat and the enzymes that they bring in and where that's missing, because you know you better than anybody else. So as we're talking about the different enzymes, you can go, oh, that's something I do a lot of, I probably need X, Y, Z, or I don't have to worry about that, I eat kimchi all the time. So you can do that math for yourself. So how it all works, is when we eat, um, enzymes digest the food, they make it small enough to pass into the um, small intestines, into those villi and the microvilli. Like we've got all of these different ones. It crosses into the blood, it's sucked up. <laughs> It goes to the metabolic enzymes and they partner with everything and understanding that a protein enzyme can only break down proteins. It can't, you can take a ton of protolytic enzymes and they will not be able to break down fats, period. Same thing, you can take a ton of enzymes that break down fats and it can't break down anything else. So understanding how that works and why we need such a wide variety, each enzyme has a specific job. Without enzymes, nothing will work in your body. And I, I truly mean that. Enzymes are that important. So clearly, we have a lot that we need to talk about. We're not going to talk about all 1,300 enzymes. We're just going to focus on the food enzymes and the enzymes that come inside our detoxine. So as we get started, I need you to know detoxime is what's called a fast-acting enzyme. So this is a vegetarian digestive enzyme that you can take with the food, and it's going to work quickly. It's not a slow-acting. We'll talk about some of those later. And we're going to break down each thing. So the first thing I want to talk about is cumin seed powder. It is the um, first ingredient listed in our detoxine because there's more of it than anything else. And then we also have cumin seed essential oil. I'm going to go ahead and talk about both of them um, at the same time, but there is a huge difference between them and what they do. We're going to hit that a little bit too. So cumin has been used as a culinary and medicinal herb for centuries, been around for a long time. It's a part of the same family as things like celery and, and carrots, parsley. They're all in the same family. And although it's super flavorful, it's, they've also been used for the digestive system forever. And we are talking digestive system from the mouth all the way to the anus, everything in between. Detoxime um, has both, like I said, the seed and the oil, and they are different. The seed, so you know the powder that's in there, is literally derived from, the, so it's a flowering plant, there's a little seed inside it. They take those seeds and they dry them out completely. After they are dried, then they are pulverized, and that is the powder. So it has all of that goodness inside it. And even probably a little bit of essential oil is still in there in that process, but then the essential oil is actually from the seed 
seeds, they're harvested, and then they are steam distilled. So we don't dry them first. They are steam distilled at a very low heat. And when that happens, we get all kinds of release of these amazing compounds. It becomes highly concentrated, full of all different con um, constituents, things like uh, monoterpenes and beta-pionine and thymol and cumin aldehydes. Cumin seed is amazing for your entire gut. It's powerful for your immune system. It's supportive. Um, it provides good, good, healthy bowel movements and good flora. So all those critters that I always talk about in your gut and how important they are, the cumin actually helps to give them that life form that they're supposed to. And they contain naturally occurring substances that work like antioxidants. Two of them are called apogean and lutein. Um, they keep the free radicals in check so that your body can stay strong and healthy. This is really important. Those antioxidants help you feel energetic. Who needs to feel energetic? As a side note, those same antioxidants do all kinds of different things. They help with tightening the skin. They help with your beautiful hair. They help with all kinds of things. The thymol, which is one of the um, parts that are in the cumin, supports your liver and your pancreas. Those are the organs that secrete the bile and they secrete um, enzymes and all of the acids we're supposed to have. So important for your digestion. The apogean is a flavonoid that acts like that antioxidant and it, um, um, my phone just went off. It has an affinity for metals. Affinity means it draws metals to it. So that's an interesting thing to take a note for. I'm just saying spices like cumin help to support your body's ability to create all of the pancreatic enzymes. So things like the lipase and the protease and the amylase that your um, pancreas is supposed to kick out. They helped your body to be able to do that. And um, they just stimulate overall digestion and really healthy movements, which we're supposed to have. They also support your liver in the detox pathways. Important to know that they're great for your kidneys, hormones, beautiful hair, so many different things. And that's all the cumin. So that's important. The first enzyme we're gonna talk about today is amylase. Amylase helps to break down starches into small particles so they can be absorbed right during that digestion. And there's lots of foods that contain amylase. So you have things like sweet potatoes, um, barley, potatoes, different grains, all of those have enzymes, tomatoes. Those have um, amylase in them. And amylase is primarily made in your pancreas and your salivary glands. That's why we tell you to chew your food so well, because it starts the digestion by kicking out amylase. When you get all that saliva happening, it's breaking it down and digesting. Um, it helps so much for your bot, for your stomach then to be able to digest. So amylase, carbohydrates, breaks it down. Then we have protease, protease 4.5. Protease is a class of enzymes called protolytic enzymes just means they break down proteins that's what they do one of the enzymes actually comes from um, this is one that comes from the fermentation process so when I said that um, things like your um, kefir and your sauerkraut can make and create enzymes protease is one that comes from that fermentation process um, protease breaks down proteins and helps with the absorption of amino acids so it unlocks the bonds so when you eat you know a, a, a chicken leg you eat that chicken leg it breaks down the bond so all of those separate amino acids become individual pieces so the amino acids can go do the things. When you break apart those beautiful amino acids, they support your immune function. They promote your cardiovascular health. They um, accelerate your natural tissue repair. Like your body is supposed to constantly be replacing any tissue, anything you've done, right? That's a healthy, normal inflammatory response and it loves on your entire gut. So that's protease. Then you have bromelain. Bromelain is one of those that comes from food. So it comes from pine Apple. It comes from the skin, it comes from the fruit, it comes from the stem, and bromelain is another protolytic enzymes. It helps to digest proteins, it helps to keep your gut in balance, very loving. If you feel the occasional loose stools or from something you ate, the bromelain is one that's going to help balance that. It's going to help again with those healthy movements that are going in. Then we have phytase. Now, phytase is a natural enzyme that's found in animals, plants, microbes, like bacteria. It's there. It helps to break down a chemical called phytic acid. And we've talked about this one before. Phytic acid is the... Um, primary way that nutrients are stored in plants. 
So things like beans and grains and seeds and nuts. This is why I always tell you guys, you gotta soak your nuts. You gotta soak your seeds. You gotta soak them because it helps to break down um, some of that phytic acid um, so that the phytate levels come down. Phytic acid binds to the minerals. So it's holding the minerals for the plant. It's holding things like your magnesium, your phosphorus, it's holding the iron, it's holding all of these different parts and pieces that your body needs. It's bound, bound to them. When you use phytase, when you're ingesting and taking phytase, what happens is it unlocks and breaks down the phytic acid. So now all those beautiful vitamins that are inside there. So I mean, think about it. A seed has all the nutrients it needs to create an entire plant. And it is bound in the phytase. It is bound to it so it doesn't lose all of those nutrients, you know, calcium, amino acids, uh, zinc, all of those are locked in there. When you use phytase and you soak your foods when you're eating them, it's going to let them release and let you get that energy and the nutrients out of the cells. So important. Um, another one is that it helps with the good flora. That good bacteria does so many different things. So loving to the colon itself and the enzyme phytase can also help to break down that phytaic acid because even your bowels create a little bit of phytase to break down any that is left over because your body's trying desperately to get all that good stuff out of there. Then we have glucoamylase. It's an enzyme that digests partially processed starch and carbohydrates. And this isn't like um, processed because you got, you know, crackers from the store. Now, this is what comes in the vegetables, the proteins, the rice, the wheats, the corn, in order to release the glucose that's in there so that we can have the energy Glucoamylase is it. So partially processed starch um, digests. So what it is, is in the intestinal tract, we eat these foods and they tend to clump together, okay? They clump and they're going down the digestive canal all clumped together. And when they're clumped, we get things like that occasional constipation or that heaviness, that bloating, that feeling like, ugh, when you, when you eat something that's really high in carbs and you feel that gassy feeling, that is because your body is needing that glucoamylase. It separates all of those pieces so that they're able to go down and not give that back up. Um, and in that process, the glucoamylase helps with the fermentation that happens in your gut, which is where when you're eating carbs and you're eating the beans and you're eating the grains and you get gassy, you're farting all over the place. It's normal biology. It's the way the body breaks down those parts and pieces, so it's okay. But the glucoamylase is amazing because it helps to clean up that excess so that it relieves some of that normal, you know, the gassy bloating feeling that happens. It just happens, it's biology. Then we have lactase. Lactase is the one we were just talking about that is um, supposed to come in all of our dairy. Lactase is an enzyme that helps you digest and break down lactose, which comes in your cheeses, and it comes in your milks, and it comes in all those different things. Um, and it help, it's actually um, one of the protolytic enzymes. So in addition to breaking down lactose, it's gonna break down and unlock some of the proteins that's found in the dairy as well. So you're getting all the amino acids out of it. A lot of times people are like, um, they're, count, they're counting proteins and they're going really low carb and they've upped all of this cheese and then suddenly they can't poop. Like, ugh, and they can't poop, it locked me up, I'm bound up. It's because your body needs the lactase. It's not naturally in our dairy anymore. So making sure you're getting that lactase is gonna help with that process and it's gonna unlock the amino acids because if those amino acids, those proteins stay bound together and you're bound up, you're not actually getting the benefit from the protein because it's still in the poo. And when the poo still comes out, it's still in the poo. Lactase helps to unbind that so that it's gonna work better for you. Then we have cellulase. Now cellulase enzymes are used to break down the cellulose or the fibers of a plant cell. And they break them down into the smaller sugars that can be transformed via fermentation um, by all those great gut microbes that we have. That is cellulase. And friends, listen, I said it before, I'm gonna say it again, we are not cows. 
We do not have two stomachs to digest massive amounts of fibers and grains and tree bark and all the other things. All of the animals that do and they eat huge amounts, they've got the multiple stomachs, they have more acid that comes in, they have a churning, they literally bring that food back up and they chew it again. It gets mixed with the amylase, it goes back down and they go through that. We don't have that. So a lot of times when we increase our fiber, per the RDA that we're supposed to. I'm not anti-fiber, I'm just letting you understand how it's working in the body and why sometimes when you increase fiber you end up with diarrhea and sometimes when you increase fiber you end up constipated. And what it is is the body's not digesting that. It's just sitting there. It can't ferment it. It can't do anything with it. And so we get that occasional intestinal gas, that bloating, that pain that happens. Cellulase, what it does is it's able to convert the fiber into beta glucose. And cellulase, um, because of that, it's able to help keep your, that fiber is able to help keep your blood sugar levels nice and stable, healthy blood sugar levels. It's able to um, help with cholesterol. That fiber helps with healthy normal levels of cholesterol. And this is the reason. So a lot of the credit that fiber gets from supporting our health is actually coming from the fermentation of those fibers and cellulose and all those, those thousands of different gut bacteria we got in there, they're the real winners. They're the ones that are actually doing it. So it helps to break that down. So then we have invertase. Invertase is released by the cells in the mucous membrane of the small intestines. Invertase is an enzyme that promotes digestion of carbohydrates. So notice this one is hitting it from lots of different directions. What invertase does is it literally splits sucrose, which is common table sugar, into smaller parts and pieces. It divides it into glucose and fructose. And this particular, this enzyme is actually a secret to how bees make honey, is the invertase. Invertase literally liquefies the bonds and separates them, so you get that quick energy. Um, that's why when people, you know, they'll eat a candy bar and they're suddenly, woo, ready to go. It's because that quick energy boost, that is where it is coming from. Then you have lipase. Lipase is an enzyme that the body uses to break down the fats in the food so they can be absorbed in the intestines. I can't tell you, you know, I teach all the time about the importance of fats and increasing the fats that you're eating. And then people will tell me that, you know, they're seeing the, the nuts in their stool or their, their poop is floating and it's all the fats that are going through them and not into them. Lipase is produced by the pancreas, the mouth, and the stomach and lipase with all of those pancreatic enzymes um, help to break down all of that bloating and gassing and breaks everything into these amazing fatty acids, tiny little parts and pieces. The fatty acids, these play a role in your healthy heart, your healthy blood pressure, your cognitive health, your thought process, your healthy liver, a normal immune and inflammatory response. Those are all your fatty acids. And the lipase literally helps trigger that to break them into small pieces. It a Lipase helps with triglycerides to maintain that healthy triglyceride level because they help break them down into smaller molecules that can be used as energy instead of stored or stuck somewhere in the body. It's a lipase. Your body creates and makes it. This is an endogenous a, a source that comes from our um, detoxine, so you're getting an extra bit of it. So you know what you're eating. If you're eating a lot of nuts and you're eating your, your almonds and you're upping your fats, you're doing something like a keto, this is one that's going to really help and support that. Then we have alpha-galactosidase. This one helps to break down carbohydrates that are found in things like beans and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, um, cabbage. Think about those little drops that people take after they have eaten some bean soup or chili. This is gonna help with that, that gas, that, that occasional burning that can happen. That's what's in there. Not only that, your body makes and uses this beautiful molecule as a part of normal recycling of your old red blood cells and all the other different cells in your body. Your body is amazing. It knows what it's supposed to do. It creates what it needs and that's one of the ones that it just does amazing things with. As always, Young Living supplements always are packed with essential oils, like all of the ones that we have, and they always complement the main reason for the supplement, right? And they add benefits. And in our detoxine, there's three different essential oils. Cumin seed oil, we already talked about, so I'm not gonna go over that one again. But then we also have anise seed oil. And I'm always, when I'm teaching a class, I typically end up saying anus seed. And it really should be called anise seed because it is phenomenal for what it's 
it's going to do for your gut. This one is native to Egypt and the Middle um, Mediterranean. Medicinally, it's been used in foods for centuries. It has been used for all kinds of different reasons. Same plant family as the cumin, so it's the same family as celery, carrots, parsley, that whole family, and it is known as a tummy tamer. Teas made from the anise um, are soothing, relaxing, um, great for occasional upset belly. The steam from that same cup of tea helps to open up your nasal passages so you can breathe and feel so good. Comfortable, great for the abdominal. Um, internally, like when you're taking it in our detoxime, um, anise essential oil is very supportive to the stomach, the small intestines, the liver. It's great for um, your large intestines. It encourages proper bowel movements, normal healthy hydrochloric acid levels in your stomach, which are so important. The other oil that's in here is our fennel seed essential oil. Now, you guys know I talk about fennel a lot. I talk about using it topically over the throat, over your vocal cords to help you speak your own truth. That's a whole nother class, emotionally what it does, how it's how it's calming but fennel the seed itself is native to southern europe and these beautiful it is the seeds the leaves the pollen the stalk the bulb fennel is edible top to bottom it's one of those plants and again it has been used as a food source and it has been used medicinally for a host of different things throughout the years fennel essential oil is derived solely from the seeds so although you can eat the whole plant Ours comes directly from the seeds. It is steam distilled and it has all those amazing properties, all that concentration of all of those different chemical components that get in our body and do great things. Taken internally, like in our detoxine, fennel essential oil supports your digestion and all of those detox pathways. It's really important. It helps with those bowel movements. It helps keep your gut healthy and thriving. A few drops of fennel vitality in a cup of hot tea before a meal supports that proper digestion. It soothes that upset tummy and it calms the appetite so you feel like you're in control when you're sitting down to eat. It is a powerhouse. So all together, our detoxine has a host of powerful enzymes and oils that digest plants, plant fibers, beans, nuts, seeds, Seeds, dairy, proteins. On top of that, it helps unlock the nutrients from your food that help to detoxify your body. It is a powerhouse that promotes overall cleansing. So you know you better than anybody else. You know what types of food that you're eating. And when, when I was sharing everything, if you go, you know what, I do that, then this one might be for you. Now the recommendations on the bottle say that you take one capsule three times a day one capsule three times a day. So you do you. I know that Gary Young, uh, he said that he would take a handful of them every night before bed so they could do their magic while he was sleeping. I know that for me, if I have a meal that is you know, high in seeds, I make my own nut granola, I soak my seeds, I soak my nuts, I dehydrate them, and then I turn it into a granola. So if I'm eating some of my granola with maybe um, some almond milk on it or pecan milk, which is my favorite to make, then I know there's a lot of phytates in there. So I'll make sure I up the amount of allergy I take with, not allergy, detox I take with that meal because I'm literally eating something that needs the cellulase and it needs um, to be able to unlock the, um, the phytates that are in there. So it needs the phytase. So depending on what I eat, also will change the amount that I take. If I am eating a really high fibrous food and, and I decide to have beans or something, this is what I'm going to grab for because it's going to help me digest it. If I'm going to eat the food, I want to get all the nutrients out of said food. And that's our detox sign. So over the next few weeks, we are going to talk about all of the enzymes that Young Living carries and um, really break them down so that you'll know when and what and what would your broad range be and what are fast acting enzymes compared to slow acting enzymes and we need both and what a balance it is. So if you are brand new and somebody sent you this video, get back with the person that sent it to you. They're gonna help you unlock all of the different savings that Young Living offers. If you found me on your own, shoot me a message, I'll help you out. But and either way, I will see you at the next whatever. I do classes about every other day. So you can pop on here on Facebook Live and see what we have going on. All right guys, God bless. We will talk with you later.